Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, guys, it is getting to be the middle of the year, and uh, I put this video in my scheduling little cheat thing for this time of year to give myself some accountability because if you will recall at the beginning of the year i set myself some ambitious goals some ambitious tbrs uh the primary ambition here is around the classics uh tbr i set myself so i wanted to have a check-in point where i talked about like how that in particular was going um and talking sort of about what I thought I might do for my classics TBR for the rest of the year. So I'm going to do that in the back half of the video. The first half of the video, we're going to do just a quick check in on all of my challenges and how they're going, if I've changed them at all as the year has gone by and I've kind of like faced reality <laughs> on certain things and just generally sort of an overall challenge uh, check in with y'all. And then we'll talk about my classics challenge, what I've gotten done so far. And now that I'm further into the year, like really honing in on the classics that I think I'm going to try to get in for the rest of the year. So let's start with the other challenges and then we'll get to the classics part. So let's start with my in-depth challenge. So I wanted to try to completely catch up on the in-depth series. That was my initial goal at the beginning of the year. So I like did the math of what I needed to get done and quickly realized that that was just not a good idea because by making myself read them so quickly, I was just like not enjoying them the way that I really should be. And uh, so I gave up on that and decided to readjust my goals. I would like to get to number 39 by the end of the year because number 39 is a Christmas themed book. So I would like to read that in, in December. And I would also like to read this like literary criticism book about it that I have this year. So that's my goal. And I'm actually ahead as we speak right now. I am one month ahead of my schedule. Um, I'm going to try to stay a month ahead, just give myself some slack, but I'm doing good on my readjusted challenge. And so now I am on track to next year be totally caught up with the in-depth series. It will have been basically a three or three and a half year process to get that going. So we'll, we'll be very excited when I'm back up to date with that one. Another challenge that I have going is the Reading Women Challenge. There are 24 prompts in this challenge. So I decided to make it into a little bingo board because I knew I wouldn't get to all of them, but my goal was to try to get five bingos. I currently have one bingo and I have a path two, let's see here, one, two, three. So I definitely have a road to three. I've got this one and then I've already outlined how I will get both of these and this one. So that really only leaves one other bingo left. Um, I think I'm trying to look and see which ones. I think that the easiest one to add in would be to find a translated book before 1945 by a woman. So that is probably where I will focus trying to uh, sneak that one in, or maybe a play by a woman. I think those would probably be my two easiest ways to get the extra bingo. But all that to say, I think I'm making good progress on this. I love the idea of the Reading Women's Challenge. Like, I think it's great, but at the same time, I'm also somebody who doesn't really struggle to read books by women or featuring women. Um, and actually, in large part, I think that's because I read so much genre fiction. There's a lot more representation of women, I think, in genre fiction than like kind of more literary fiction, which is kind of sad to say, but that I do find that to somewhat be the case. That is where I am with that challenge. And then I did complete two like readathon type things or like reading challenges. So one, I did the Asian readathon um, which I really enjoyed I will link I will link that one somewhere and then I also created a reading challenge which was Goodreads friends pick my TBR um, so I went through and like stocked people's five-star reads and read some of them so I did reading vlogs for both of those but I have finished both those reading challenges I have two that I'm currently working on that I can't tell you guys about yet but I'm really excited for both of them I think you guys are gonna like them um, so I've been doing some reading challenge video ideas basically or like vlog ideas um, just because I think you guys the feedback I've got is that you guys like it when I can work in some vlogging and uh, I've tried to get creative about how to do that because I just don't think I have a lot of great ideas about how to just make like normal life interesting to vlog so anyway both of those are coming I have finished two already and uh, I did a couple also of like travel vlogs or I've done one travel vlog which was my one to London and then um, I'm also gonna try to vlog when I go to Booknet Fest in September 
very excited about that. You'll be hearing more about that, I think, in the weeks to come. But anyway, so uh, some vlogging and reading challenge updates there. Before we get to the classics, I have three other categories I want to mention. And guys, just running down through this, doesn't it just make you think like, girl, why are you doing so many challenges? But I've had a fantastic reading year this year, so it's not putting me into a slump. And it's only mildly at times annoying my mood reading. So we're doing pretty good. So the first one I want to mention is Mission Marple. Um, so I have 14 books to read as a part of that. That is my um, project where I am reading and reviewing all of the Miss Marple books in their order of publication. As of this filming, I have read 13 of the 14. I'm a few books ahead. So the only one I have left is Miss Marple's Final Cases. So like definitely on track to get that done. It's been a really, uh, I've really enjoyed my reread of Miss Marple. I didn't remember liking her as much as it turns out that I do. Like I actually really like Miss Marple books a lot. I think that the overall Marple canon is stronger than the Poirot canon, it turns out, even though I think the highs in the Poirot canon are higher than the highs in the Marple canon, basically is sort of my findings so far. So anyway, I've been enjoying that. You can check out the Goodreads group if you want to catch up or see what other people have been saying about that read along. Second thing was one of my goals this year was to like be more deliberate about my arc requesting and staying on top of that. And I have done a really good job. So as of this filming, I don't have any arcs that are like immediately pending. I am more than a month ahead of time. And I only have, I think like six or seven books left this year that I have requested and gotten um, that I have to read, that I know that I have to read as of right now. And I'm only going to request probably about five or six other ones. So I think that this year was a much better arc experience for me. Um, I have been doing kind of ranked check-ins on my arc reading. I've done two of those so far, so I'll try to link those somewhere. Maybe I need to link some of these in the description box and not just the cards though, because there's a lot of videos I'm referencing here. I will do my best to remember to put links in the description box below. I've been doing good on arcs. And then finally, the other challenge before we get to the classics bit is my reading mug. So this was my 19 books that I wanted to read in 2019 list. And uh, I have been making progress in the sense of I've been reading at least one of these a month, which is great. To get to all 19 though, I need to be reading quicker than that. So kind of my thoughts similar to what I'm gonna say for classics is that since I don't have as many arcs that I'm gonna be reading in the back half of the year, I anticipate that in the back half of the year, I will be able to do a little bit of catch up here. And I think, I think that I can still read most of these. We'll see what, what happens there. But the books that I've read from that so far, got this, uh, listed out here. So the ones that I read so far were I DNF'd The Buried Giant. I read and adored Trail of Lightning. I have since read the sequel and this is one of my favorite new series. So I'm very excited that I made myself or like got myself to read that because it was awesome. I read Dare We Hope All Men Be Saved and A Short Discourse on Hell by Hans Urs von Balthasar. This was a work of like theology slash, slash philosophy about uh, the idea of hell or like, you know, what does hell mean in the context of like Catholicism that I had been meaning to read for literal years and finally read, gave a four star, thought this was thought provoking and really, really good. Jane Steele was one that I read and this surprised me. I really enjoyed this. It wasn't quite what I was expecting and it's a hard book to describe, I think, but it's really good. It's definitely worth your time, I think, um, to at least try. I don't think it'll be everyone's cup of tea, but I'm really glad that this kind of made me get to it. A Winter's Promise by Christelle Debeau. This was one of my like, books of shame on my shelf because I got it last like last year right when my dad passed away and it was an arc and I didn't get to read it because of all the whatever it was understandable but I just felt bad so I finally read this and I have the next arc <laughs> Missing Flair de Lune which I think I'm gonna read in July so I read that I gave this like two and a half stars this one was a little disappointing but I'm excited to see where the series goes so I'm glad I got to that and then uh between now and like midish July I'll read my next one which will be either Six of Crows or I Capture the Castle or both if I get creative that would actually be probably pretty good if I could make myself read both. So yeah, that is what is up next in my reading mug adventures, but I will continue to make my way through those 19 books that I want to read in 2019. And I'm hopeful that I can knock all those out by the end of the year. Okay, and so now we round back around to classics. And this is the, I wanted to do this, ch this check in for accountability for this challenge in particular. So this is the whole reason we're doing this video. Also, because I wanted to talk to you guys about like, more specifically what my thoughts are on this challenge because I left it sort of open-ended at the beginning of the year and I think I have a clearer vision now. So you could, I'll link somewhere my 12 uh, classics I wanna read in 2019. And basically what I said was I picked 12 classics I could read in 2019 and I wanted to make sure that I got to at least six of them. That was my thought. And then I also just kind of wanted to track better like when I'm reading modern classics, which I have just arbitrarily defined as like sort of 
classics that were published after 1950 versus traditional classics, which were published beforehand, just as sort of like an arbitrary line to make that distinction. Somebody argued that, that it, the cutoff should be World War I, which I totally can see the argument for that. I think I'm kind of thinking like post-World War II forward is modern. I don't know. Anyway, so that's just my arbitrary cutoff. And I wanted to make sure I was reading more classics and being more deliberate about that because I really enjoy them. But sometimes because they do take more work to read in some cases, or they're not as like just sort of light and fluffy, it's harder to make myself like really focus on them, especially like after a long day at work. So having some accountability I thought would be good. And I do think it's working because to date I have read three modern classics and I have read six traditional classics. So that's actually like really good. Now, in terms of what was on my TBR, I have only as of this recording read two that were on that actual TBR of those 12. I did read, so let's just go through what I've read so far. So for modern classics, I have three, and I am including Agatha Christie in this list just because I think she's such a genre classic. I don't know, I think she she's kind of on the fence, but I decided to include her. Okay, so the modern classics I read was They Do It With Mirrors by Agatha Christie. I gave that like four stars. I, I like that one, that was part of Mission Marple. I read If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. This was a pick for the Classics Book Club that I'm in at my local independent bookstore. I really I really enjoy this, I gave it four stars, would recommend. Uh, I definitely don't think I would have picked this up if it wasn't for that book club, so that was cool. And then Housekeeping by Baron Lynn Robinson. This was one that was on that list I mentioned at the beginning of the year that I knew I wanted to try to get to in terms of modern classics. Can't say that I was too impressed with this. This is probably one of my biggest disappointments, not because it was terrible. I gave it three stars, but just because Gilead is one of my all-time favorite books. That's like amazing five stars. So I was just sad that I didn't like this more. Not terrible, um, but I did. It was on my TBR, so I'm glad I got to it. Okay, and then in terms of the traditional classics, so things published before, well, one of these was written before 1950, which is why I put it in that category, written or published before 1950. So um, the two that I don't have in physical form were both two others from Agatha Christie. So The Moving Finger, I gave three and a half stars to. Uh, enjoyed, but didn't love what, not one of my favorite Christies, but I think other people like it better than I did. Just a taste thing. But I absolutely loved Sleeping Murder, which was not published until I think 1976, but it was written in 1946. It reads like 1946, so that's why I put it in the traditional bucket. I absolutely love this one. I gave that four and a half stars. Really, really good. So those were my two marbles. The two classics that I read that were not um, on that 12, the list of 12, we still have not gotten to that point, guys, which is part of why we need to talk because I need to like center myself on that list of 12. Um, but two that I read that were not on that list, one was Yalaladeen by Rafi. Um, this was sort of an opportunistic classic read because the publisher who are doing um, translations, modern translations out of the original Armenian into English contacted me and sent this to me, which was very nice of them, um, which I was really glad I got the chance to read it. It kind of reads like a parable-ish. It's not like anything I've ever read and it was a classic um, not originally written in English or French which tends to be where a lot of my classic reading is clustered so I was definitely glad I got that opportunity to branch out a little bit. And then one that I did mention in that uh, video about my TBR was Howard's End because this is another pick for my book club. This was one that I knew we were going to read because uh, it was the I think either the January or February pick um, so I knew at the beginning of the year this was one I was going to get to which was great because actually before before they picked it for the book club, I was going to put it on that list anyway. So definitely glad I got to read this four stars. Looking forward to reading more from him because I'd read A Room with a View back in the day. Now I've read Howard's End. The next one I'm going to read is Maurice, or I heard someone say it's supposed to be pronounced Morris, which I just can't wrap my head around. So Maurice um, will be my next Ian Forrester. But yeah, so those were the ones not on the TBR, the list of 12. I have the red two from that that list. And those two are, first, I did read The Good Soldier by Ford Maddox Ford. This is one that I've wanted to read since I was in college and kind of heard of Ford Maddox Ford as like one of the great authors of sort of like the World War I era um, of British writers. And this is a book, so actually I should say, so before I discuss these, because I don't think I've, I've talked about this at length with you guys yet. I did also read A Handful of Dust by Evelyn Waugh. I originally, I think, had put Brides Had Revisited on my TBR list, but I just wanted to read my first Waugh this year, and since this got put, picked for the book club I'm in, I ended up reading this one instead. I gave both of these three and a half stars, and both of these have helped me clarify a taste preference in classics and or literary fiction, and that is, I think I just don't really like 
sort of like books that are primarily or or one of the main plot lines is about marital infidelity it makes me so anxious in the con I, I, so i don't really like that as a main theme in any book like in a romance i don't like there to be a cheating plot in general it's not something i like in my books and i can't totally tell you why it does just give me anxiety i i am not married I don't, I cannot tell you why this makes me so anxious, but it really does. And I think both of these books help me kind of solidify it because really that is the main sort of like plot elements that are happening in this. So often there might be like a cheating or an infidelity like kind of tangent in a book, but in both of these books, that is the main thing. And I think especially because these are classics and are written in a time period where yes, divorce was now possible, it was legal. It was not something that was socially desirable or socially normal normalized fully yet i mean it was definitely on the road to being there but it just it just creates so much anxiety in me for what's going to happen to the woman in the couple basically any time even if she's the even if she's the one doing the cheating like that is what's like this book in particular i feel like she's the the woman is not likable that could be true of either. These are actually two very similar books in a lot of ways, I have to say, the more I think about that. But um, it made me so anxious on their behalf because I'm like, even if you get your divorce, like what's gonna happen? I don't know, it stressed me out. So both of these I gave a three and a half star to, and I learned something about myself as a reader, I think in the pro process, so I'm really glad I read these. Both of these also, I discovered I quite like the authorial voice. I will say that Evelyn Waugh reminds me in some ways of Graham Greene, and I do, definitely prefer Graham Greene over Evelyn Waugh, but I've got two more books from him. I will keep trying with both of those, which are Brideshead Revisited and Scoop. I think Scoop will be my next one from him. Um, so we'll see if I can find something from him that I like better. I also really, if, if I was going to tell you which of these I enjoyed more, I did like The Good Soldier better. I was between a three and a half and a four on it, and I love the ending of this. I also love how like ironic this title is with The Good Soldier. I don't know. I, I definitely preferred this one, I think, a little bit. And uh, I liked the authorial voice in both. So I would read more from these authors, but these particular books that I did read for my TBR um, were not necessarily my favorites, but I still read them. So that was exciting. So that is only two from <laughs> that list of 12 of ones that I really wanted to read in 2019. So now that I have a better line of sight into the rest of the year, I have now a path to get to at least five of those, and then we're gonna talk about the other things I would like to get done. So there is a current plan to read all three of these books, which would get me to five. So first of all, A Room of One's Own. First of all, it's not very long. This is my nonfiction pick. It's Virginia Woolf. And this is something that I am going to read in nonfiction November. So. We have a plan of when this is gonna get read. We also have a plan of when Dracula is going to get read. I am reading this in October as like my Halloween classic read for this year. So this is definitely getting read this year. And then last but not least here in, by the time you're seeing this, I think next week, uh, we are, I'm hosting a read along of The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. I wanted to read either this or Les Mis this year. Um, I, technically this is a reread because I did read this as a kid, but it's been so long, this is basically just a read. So there's already a plan to read this one. This is happening in July. So these three will definitely get read for sure this year. In terms of what I would like to have happen. So first of all, I made a solemn vow that this isn't even on the TBR list because I'm like, come hell or high water, this year I'm reading Moonstone. So you heard it here first, apart from even that sixth slot on that TBR, I am reading this this year. So this is definitely happening. That is like, I'm. that's gonna happen. So that leaves four more to fill in that last slot. And I would honestly like to read all four of these I just need to think through timing wise when this can happen. So David Copperfield, I, I guess if I was gonna tell you definitively what the sixth pick I have, it's David Copperfield because I have this as audio, which is read by Richard Armitage. So I have a plan of how this is gonna get read. It's gonna be an audio pick. So this is definitely gonna happen. The other three that I've gotta figure out like where to slot them in, because I really want to read all three of these this year, are Northanger Abbey, the Tenet of Wildfell Hall, and North and South. These are three books that I have wanted to get to for a very long time, and damn it, 2019 is gonna be the year I do it. So I guess, like, maybe in theory, like, Northanger Abbey in August, North and South in September, and, like, maybe 
double up in November, put Tenant of Wildfell Hall in there with a Room of One's Own since Room of One's Own's pretty small. So like maybe that's what can happen. I don't know and I don't care. This is something that's gonna happen. So even though I am I think I do have a clear line of sight on how I'm gonna get to those six, I really wanna get to nine because I these sound good to me and I want to read them and I just need to clear out some space in my TBR. So I have a little extra time. It's not even like these take that long to read guys. This is basically just me instead of reading one book in a certain amount of time, probably only reading a half a book in a certain amount of time. So like this will take, like let's just assume this will take twice as long. That is one less book that I get to read that month. I need to just like clear my schedule out and make it happen because I really want to read these. Okay, so that is my check-in on my King's Classics TBR in particular because I needed the accountability, um, but also just my challenges in general. I think, like I said, I've got a lot of challenges going and sometimes I'm like, this is really stifling your mood reading. Why are you doing this? But I do find it helps me like keep on track because the few moments this year where I've not had a clear like, I need to read this next. I've gone several days without really picking anything new up. I've just done rereading because I was like, I don't know what to read. So I think giving myself like a lot of variety and then mood reading within that set variety seems to be a pretty good strategy for me. So I'm just going to keep on keeping on. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But anyway, definitely let me know below uh, how you are doing on any challenges you have set for yourself this year with reading or uh, comment on any of mine. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I will talk to you soon.